a layer one blockchain with a new smart contracts language called Pact and a new proof of work consensus mechanism called ChainWeb. It sounds interesting, and it is interesting. Ooh. Let's take a look at the Cadena blockchain. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Crypto Masters podcast, helping the general public master an understanding of crypto assets. My name is Brian. And my name is Ross. And we are the, the Crypto, crypto Masters. Masters. Hey everybody, quick reminder that we at The Crypto Masters are long-term investors. We're not here for short-term traders or to give any kind of short-term trading advice. And Brian, are you a financial advisor? No. Neither am I, so this is not financial advice. And we've got that all that out of the way, and let's get into this exciting project called Cadena. Cadena. <laughs> yeah, there's a little discrepancy on that, but or not discrepancy, but we've heard it pronounced uh, Cadena and Cadena. No. But we're going. Wait, Cadena or Cadena? Cadena or Cadena. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I'm already <laughs> messing it up. So, Cadena's <laughs> goal is to build a blockchain that is both scalable and developer friendly. It uses a proof of work consensus method, so it's a mine similar to Bitcoin and other proof-of-work blockchains using computers, but not requiring the super-powerful computers that Bitcoin requires. Yeah, so that is a feature, you know, they will always uh, promote the fact that we are proof-of-work. And, you know, a lot of people th prefer proof-of-work as, as a more secure consensus mechanism because of Bitcoin. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. All right, so Cadena calls its consensus mechanism ChainWeb. And it claims that ChainWeb is the only sharded and scalable layer one proof of work network in production today. So this is one of the real differentiators, I would say, for Cadena. Uh, Big one. Yes. Take note of this one. So yeah. take note of ChainWeb. It uses parallel chain proof of work architecture comprised of braided chains. Remember that. That all mine the same native cryptocurrency. All of the braided chains have the ability to transfer liquidity between each other and can offer an extremely high throughput without increasing the overall hash power of the network. New blocks reference not only their own previous blocks, like blockchains, mm -hmm. but also the previous blocks of the peer chains. So it actually increases the security while increasing scalability. So this is really one of the features that you know they want to emphasize. And this approach is different than side chains, which we've heard of before, because each individual chain in this, in the Cadena uh, blockchain, has the same capabilities as the main chain. So to make this possible, Cadena uses graph theory, similar to DAG, which we've talked about before. Very similar, yep. Directed mm -hmm. acyclic graph technology. That's DAG. But here, instead, it uses a fixed graph structure. So, Ross, we both like the, ta the DAG technology, search, such as IOTA and Hydera Hashgraph. And this is similar, but different. So, it's very interesting. Yeah, good note there, Brian. And Kadena claims that ChainWeb will allow it to grow to more than a thousand chains, each of which can execute thousands of transactions per second. And in 2022, Kadena's public blockchain performed a live network expansion from 10 to 20 chains so this thing is you know ever growing uh, all chain web chains have the potential to be specialized for particular operations and developers can choose which chains to run their smart tr contracts on so again giving uh, a lot of flexibility and uh, power to the developers as yeah. well uh, and this is how Cadena hopes to achieve scalability on its base layer one without the need for layer two solutions which they do have one but we'll get into here in a second yeah so interesting all right so chain web is one feature of cadena that's different but so is its programming language cadena uses a smart contract language all of its own called pact p-a-c-t that it hopes will be developer friendly and is human readable and it's built on the haskell language um, Pact is designed to improve on what it sees as weaknesses in Ethereum's solidity, uh, particularly Solidity's susceptibility to unbounded loops 
and lack of formal verification. Ooh, shots fired. Yeah. <laughs> By using the, the packed programming language, smart contracts can be upgraded without requiring a hard fork. So they got the chain web, and then they have their own language called packed. Yeah, and I just want to say one thing on PACT, you know, being built on Haskell from a developer myself, I would just say, you know, Haskell is not what a lot of the developers in the industry have seen or worked with. Um, you know, Solidity's got more of that edge of being f similar to Java or JavaScript, uh, especially when building objects like that. But, you know, I'd say from my experience with Haskell, uh, trying to learn a little bit of Plutus on the side uh, it, it's a little of a learning curve, but it's very intuitive. It just kind of picks up and starts to make sense. So I'd say the learning curve is not that bad. Um, yeah. But yeah, as I mentioned previously, Kadena also built a layer two private blockchain called Kadena Kuro. Am I saying that right, Brian? I, as far as I know, yeah, yeah. Kuro. Yeah. <laughs> so, a, lot, a lot of it as far as we know, but that has been used by a healthcare uh, consortium to collect and maintain insurance provider information. And this private or permission blockchain can be used similar to a sidechain to speed up transaction processes and create new marketplaces for data. So Kuro has been used on AWS, Amazon Web Services, and reportedly has achieved up to 8,000 transactions per second across 500 nodes. So definitely yeah. a big number there. So that's kind of interesting. You know, the public blockchain is normally what we talk about here on the Crypto Masters, but... You know, they have a, a sort of a side chain or a layer two that's a private, um, you know, blockchain. So that's kind of a, a, an interesting, I don't know, hybrid maybe. Yeah. And we that. can see in this use case, they kind of market it towards, uh, you know, specific use cases, which. Yeah. Yes. And that that is their, you know, their market is not only the, the general public, but specific for businesses. And hey. If you want a public blockchain, no problem. If you want a private one, we can do that too. And, you know, we showed that with this Kuro. So interesting. Speed on layer one, crazy speed on layer two. Yeah. Bam. Right. So another feature of Kadena is a gas station service. Now, we all know about gas from, from Ethereum, but this is a bit different. So gas stations are accounts that refund all gas utilized to execute specific smart contracts. And the purposes of gas stations are Kadena is to ease the user onboarding in dApps by allowing the user to interact with a dApp without being required to acquire the crypto native on exchange and then transfer it to a wallet to use the dApp services. So Kadena is really making an effort to remove the barriers to new users onboarding, which is a smart move. We've talked about this before. This is what we really need in crypto. Make it simple to bring in the new users. And they're doing that here with these gas stations. And it's kind of like... I mean, I think they're subsidizing it with, you know, you hear about uh, a lot of these other projects have the, the treasury coins or tokens that they'll use to, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And, and that's what they're kind of doing here. They're subsidizing this. Okay, we're not going to charge you any fees at first to get on and onboard it and see if you like it. So, you know, if it's successful, this will drive the expansion of their user, va user base. And that is that is a key you know, benefit. Oh, it's this. critical. It's absolutely critical. Yeah. But hot topic in the crypto space right now is NFTs. And also uh, NFTs can be built on Kadena with Pact and allow for more function than just, you know, the transfer, which is a limitation of ERC, ERC standards for Ethereum. Yeah. And according to Stuart Popjoy, Pope Joy, sorry, Pope Joy, the co-founder of Kadena, NFT sales in Ethereum marketplaces that involve the functions of royalties require trust in the marketplace. So, you know, but the native NFT standard on Kadena makes it possible to automatically transfer royalties to the creator, even if the sale or transfer is done outside of the um, NFT marketplace. So, very cool, and this protects the NFT creator's right to receive royalties from his or her, his or her NFT creation, which, you know, NFTs yeah. are such a hot topic right now and, you know, really has empowered at least uh, currently artists to really, uh, you know, make a living wage again and right. off some uh, cats and apes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't done a lot with, um, with NFTs, but I mean, we've talked about how big they're going to be certainly in the gaming industry, but just overall. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, 
the, the, it appears that these marketplaces, um, and there are just, you know, really a couple or a few really big ones, yeah. um, you know, sort of require trust in the marketplace to make sure that the, um, the, the originator, the developer, the artist of the NFT, you know, gets the royalties. And, and this appears to be an advancement by, uh, by the Kadena blockchain and, and their language. So that, that seems, again, to be another pretty good benefit. All right. So, Ross, you know, Kadena has a lot of diverse projects. We, can't, we don't have time to talk about them all. But they're also in DeFi. They're in DEXs. As you said, they're in NFT marketplaces and wallets. So there's really just a, a lot going on with this. But let's talk about the history. We always do this on the, the Crypto Masters. The history of, of Kadena is pretty interesting, and its roots can be traced back to investment bank J.P. Morgan. <laughs> boo, boo. <laughs> Jamie Dimon, boo. <laughs> but anyway, Kadena, but these guys, we'll, we'll see. So Kadena was founded in 2016, and prior to founding Kadena, Stuart Popejoy led J.P. Morgan's emerging blockchain group. And the other co-founder, Will Martino, previously was the tech lead at the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, their cryptocurrency steering committee. So, you know, they have experience in this way. But they previously worked together both at J.P. Morgan. And when J.P. Morgan worked on their private blockchain, which kind of became famous in, in a sense, even though it's a private blockchain. Yeah. Um, and it's now called, or now is what's utilized, their, their JPM coin. Yeah. I don't know that that ever really took off, but... Um, you don't it, hear much about it. No, you don't. <laughs> but it was good, you know, it was good experience for them. Here's another thing, though, Ross. So other than those two guys, um, key member of its advisory board is Dr. Stuart Haber, who is the most cited author in Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin white paper. Pretty impressive. Yeah, pretty... That's a that's a powerhouse team right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, I mean, you take out, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Haber there, and you still got a really good team, but man, that, that well, shows you got... And these guys, you know, the J.P. Morgan guys, we might say, boo, you, you're, you're the enemy. You're the centralized guy, bankers. We don't... But they left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, this is their second chance. <laughs> yeah, they, they left to get into the decentralized world, so they saw the light. Yeah, they, they did see the light. That is true. <laughs> And you know what, Brian? I think I'm going to take over the tokenomics talk for today. It was time. Mind. It was time. It's time <laughs> to switch switch that up a little bit. So yeah, the Kadena coin is KDA. The maximum supply is one billion, and there are currently 171 million in circulation at the time of this podcast. So only about 17 percent are in circulation, and KDA and it, KDA is used to pay for computing power on the Kadena blockchain. Similar to how ETH is used, or ETH, you know, ETH is used for Ethereum uh, blockchain. KDA is also paid to miners for mining blocks similar to Bitcoin's block reward of BTC for uh, successfully mining a block. And the token allocation are as follows. So we've got 70% going to the miners. That makes sense, especially in uh, proof of work. Uh, 9% to early investors in the team. 20% for platform reserve, which is like a project treasury, if you will. And 1% was burned during the initial launch. Um, what, what do you have to say about that that proportion there, Brian? I think that's... that's it's really pretty, not that bad. Yeah. No. It's pretty it, solid. It, it is. I mean, 70% to miners, and this is a proof of work, so you got um, uh -huh. to reward the miners. And I mean, similar to Bitcoin, um, it, it's going to be um over a period of more than 100 years um uh -huh. so you know but you definitely have to have some for the miners and then you know we've talked about a lot of them that have way more than 20 percent go to the founders and the early investors um this is only nine percent so yeah i would say that is not bad yeah and you know if you've reached this point of the episode and you're curious okay you've sold me on this where can i buy it you can buy kda on Binance, KuCoin, and Gate.io. Yeah, not a lot of there. Not a lot of options for the Americans, for the U.S. Yeah. residents that I could see. But you know, if you work hard enough, you can usually get it. Yeah, yeah, you can usually <laughs> get your hands on a 
<laughs> certain ways, certain ways. Yeah, or I guess if you have some and need to sell it, you can always find a way to do that as well. Yeah. All right, Ross, what do you think? Is it time for uh, final thoughts? It is time for final thoughts, Brian. I think you are up this Am week. Am I up this week? Fire away. All right, I am going to go. You know, um, w- when we started this, I didn't know much about uh, Cadena. I did know it was proof of work, um, mm-hmm. which is interesting. And, you know, maybe almost maybe the minority now of, of the uh, of the layer ones. Um, Certainly shaping up like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of people are going to, uh, to proof of stake and I, I have mixed feelings. I, I think the, the criticisms of proof of work is mostly FUD. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the power energy consumed or whatever is, is way overstated and overblown. Um, you know, and obviously yes, proof of stake is a, a big advantage in, in that, um, if that is a concern, but you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know that it's a legitimate concern. But the will say Cadena has almost addressed that. I mean, it's proof of work, and a lot of people just love the security of proof of work, certainly for Bitcoin. But then if others um, employ that and have enough people working at it, uh, you know, it is a secure way to, you know, secure your blockchain. Um, so the thing about Cadena is with this chain web that we talked about, it can actually. Um, increase its security without increasing its um, energy use. Uh-huh. So, so that's a point they make is Bitcoin, you know, has the increased difficulty level, which is a feature of Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah but, right. but that feature does require then more energy use to, uh, to achieve the, the, the winning uh, block. And yeah. So it keeps sort of increasing but um, Cadena does not. It's basically kind of like fixed. Yeah. So whatever now is being used is e- even as it grows and, and gets more popular and, and has more of these uh, braided chains, the energy use stays the same. So that's, that's, that's one. Yeah, it's something they baked in and something they're it marketing. Is. So. Right, right. Um, so also the, the, the chain web thing is, is very interesting. So... We talked, particularly, I think, with IOTA, um, of how DAG is different. It's not a blockchain, which is, you know, somewhat linear if you're sort of just viewing it. You know, DAG and mm-hmm. um, and IOTA in particular uses the Tangle, right? Which is, you know, oh yeah. Uh-huh. Um, to me, this is similar, but it is, but it is different. It's fixed. Like DAG is more like random. And, you know, this is a fixed graph and I'm not going to pretend to understand it all, mm-hmm. but I like the fact that it's, it's a different than blockchain and, and frankly, probably an improvement on blockchain if we're yeah. being honest. So I like the, you know, I like the advances in the industry because everything that advances, you know, digital assets and, uh, and crypto is, is a good thing for me. So I like that. I think I, I like that a lot. I think chain web is a real different differentiator. Everybody has their differentiators. I think this one is legit. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's cool. And then the language thing, I, I don't know about that. You know more about that than I do. Um, it seems to be, uh, a good thing. Um, because they've baked in, they're not just doing it to be different, but they baked in benefits to it. So to me, that seems good as well. They are. Um, and, and, Another thing I really like about this is we've talked about before, they're really making efforts to make it easier for people to get into the, you know, the, the, the blockchain, the crypto. Yep. Uh-huh. There, there, there are barriers to some extent signing up for an exchange. Yeah. But getting a wallet, mm-hmm. you know, uh, buying a crypto so that you can then convert it maybe to something else to participate in the game. They're, they're, you know, it's, to us, we've done it. It's not that big of a deal, but to new users, it's a bit of a barrier, and they're trying to overcome that. So I welcome anything in that regard. And they're doing that in particular for the gaming industry, which you and I have talked about before. We think that's the huge. That's going to be the huge next big thing. Oh, so, yeah. um, in summary, Ross, my my final yeah. thoughts, which I rambled on a bit, <laughs> I, but I I, I did it because I like I like. Cadena, that's how I'm pronouncing it. Okay, yeah. Well, that's on their official YouTube. You, yeah. Yeah. You're more of a Cadena man, which is fun. <laughs> it seems to be both ways. But yeah, 
I'm I'm high on this project. I like it. Yeah. Now we we might say it's around number hundred on the uh, market cap. I think you know Coin Coin Gecko has it a little bit above a hundred. I think uh, Coin Market Cap has a little bit below, so it's right around a hundred. Yeah, had a tremendous run up in late 2021. Yeah, and then came back down and, and not all the way, but it's flattened out. And what is it, around five? Uh, yeah, five forty-five on the date of this podcast. Five forty-five on the date. So anyway, um, I, I I I like it. I'm definitely gonna try to find a way to to buy it or get my hands on some. How about that? Very good. Very Take it cool. over, man. Your final thoughts after all that. Wow. Uh, I mean, <laughs> not much else to say. I do want to disclose uh, some something personal, Brian. Um, I want to let everyone know I don't do drugs, but I'm high on Kadena. <laughs> I'm very high on Kadena. This is a very exciting project. And look, I'm throwing a little shot here, but isn't this kind of the beauty of not being a maxi in any regard that we get to look at? at all these uh, projects and ever expanding advances in crypto. And I guess you couldn't really, maybe you can't say blockchain technology in this case, but a, maybe you have to say expanding uh, the tech <laughs> of blockchain technology or, you know, this, this one's obviously called chain web. And you mentioned it too. Like when I was kind of reviewing it in my head, I was like, Oh, it's kind of, it's a dag. It's a tangle kind of like Iota kind of, that's the first, uh, project that really led something like that but this is feels more sophisticated uh more organized more efficient um you know obviously the energy use of bitcoin is on a lot of people's minds and when i say a lot of people i'll say political uh person's minds so they they're kind of they've got that, i roll yeah i roll for sure but they're they're at least like saying hey we've we're addressing that in some way in some fashion yeah. um so you know i'm not going to pretend it still doesn't use a lot but I think that's, like you've said, Brian, perfectly, that's a feature uh, for security and decentralization more than, a, um, I guess, a burden or a bad taste in crypto cryptocurrency projects. But I, you know, I, I had a ton of fun researching this project, and I tried to find something to knock it. And, I mean, everything across the board just seems really, really cool. And again... Great day to not be a Bitcoin or any other maxi. <laughs> so you can review projects like this. I would hate get... to be a maxi. Yes. So, <laughs> hey, that that's my final thought. I mean, right. go check it out. Do some more research on your own. And this, this project, awesome. Do we mention the hoodies or just let everybody just take it let all them in? view? Just let them take it all in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. Hey, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Crypto Masters. And guys, follow us. We've got all our socials in the description and the banner below if you're watching on YouTube. And check out thecryptomasters.com, your one-stop shop to all things crypto. Do it now. We've got, look, look, we, you get, oh. we not only have the coin gecko type, you know, market cap rankings and all that. But we got these tools. You just need to come check out because I think you're going to have some fun with them. Yeah, profit calculator, price at market cap, see where other projects would be at another project's market cap use right. it for a comparison tools right it's your one-stop shop and we just start a blog so you can find this episode in blog form if you want to check it out later in silence <laughs> yeah <laughs> thanks everybody see you next time